Very little has been written and published about the contribution of one field squadron workshop, Raimi, during its deployment to South Vietnam and as organic part of the one field squadron group. This is because of the way in which it provided support as a fully integrated element of the squadron. Together with carrying out its formal role of repair and recovery of unit vehicles, equipment, personnel equipment and weapons, the workshop also participated in all unit operational activities, including perimeter defence and repair in locations under severe enemy threat. Its contribution was vital to the achievements of the squadron group. During my time as OC of the unit, from October 1967 to November 68, the officers in charge of the workshop were Len Masters and later Ian Acker Archer. Initially, the workshop had an authorised strength of 30 all ranks. However, it grew to 48 in December 1967, when the squadron was increased by the addition of a third field troop. During the early part of the workshop's deployment, one of the major problems was the availability of spare parts. But notwithstanding this major impediment, the members of the workshop worked tirelessly to service and repair the equipment vital for the squadron to perform its role. During my time, so excellent was the support of the workshop that on one day in October 1968, Captain Archer reported that for a period of 30 minutes, all our equipment was fully serviceable. A unique circumstance, considering the difficulty of its achievement, the South Vietnam environment, and the extent of the effort required by workshop members to achieve this status. In my subsequent commands, I held this achievement up as a target that had been achieved under impossible conditions. I remember visiting the workshop strong point on the perimeter of the squadron on many occasions and was always struck by the competence of those manning it and the responsibility they felt for the security of their sector. As an aside, I also noted the home comforts that the craftsmen had somewhere or other acquired for their occupational period. The workshop developed a special relationship with the orphanage at Berea. This orphanage was run by very merry, with very merry resources by Catholic nuns who, despite great personal sacrifice, needed help to provide a minimal level of care for their many orphan charges. I know that all members of the workshops contributed their skills and assistance when it was possible to do so. It didn't matter where the equipment was located, whether in the Nuidat base or on operations, if it broke down, it still needed to be repaired. Due to the difficulty of recovery, it was often necessary to appear on site with all the difficulties of weather, mud, absence of hard standing, and the need for protection against enemy action. On no occasion did the workshop shirk any tasks, no matter how difficult the repair task, or the challenges of the location or of the weather. One of the major and continuing operational problems of the task force was the existence of the barrier minefield. The problem with the minefield was that some 22,000 M16 mines had been planted in the minefield that stretched from the horseshoe feature to the village of Long Phuc Hai, some 10,000 metres. The Republic of South Vietnam units responsible for protecting the minefield did not do so. This allowed the VC to use the minefield as a source of supply. The task force suffered many casualties from these mines and it became imperative that the minefield be cleared. The first two attempts at clearing were made in 1968. The photos later show the results of immense effort by workshop members to construct devices that were suspended initially in the front of a Centurion tank, then for the second version being slung both front and rear of the tank. Not only did workshop members cut and weld these massive skirts, but they repaired and adjusted them as necessary within the minefield. These tasks were certainly on the margin as a responsibility of the workshop.
but it was indicative of the way in which the workshop made its resources and skills available for every squadron task. It transpired that despite immense effort, the two attempts in 1968 were unsuccessful. I know that the workshop played a leading role in the later operation that successfully cleared the minefield in 1969. There's a lot more information about the 1969 clearance and the involvement of the workshop and Captain Power in it in the publication History of One Field Squadron Group by Brian Florence. The squadron's involvement in the Coral Balmoral operation in May and June 1968 initially involved a two-day road convoy, then some 25 days of intense operational activity, including the withstanding of several sustained enemy attacks by a two-day road convoy return to Nui Dat. A workshop forward repair team accompanied and supported the squadron throughout. It was heavily committed to the repair tasks due to the number of vehicles, plant items, and the criticality of the serviceability of our equipment and weapons. As normal, the workshop element was responsible for a sector of our perimeter 24 hours a day. The workshop members present withstood fierce attacks on our perimeter and contributed greatly to the ward of the unit citation for gallantry, which was later given to the unit. It was appropriate that the photograph that has been used repeatedly in the publicity of the battle was of Corporal Stewart, one of the members of our forward repair team. One of the impressions still etched in my mind is the acceptance of their workships of the difficulties faced and its commitment to overcome these challenges to ensure that the squadron had serviceable equipment to carry out its role. The craftsmen were accepted as indispensable members of the unit, earned through their dedication, resourcefulness, reliability and acceptance of tasks beyond their role, and their participation in the operational activities of the unit. The Corps of Royal Australian Electrical and Mechanical Engineers has every right to be proud of the performance of the One Field Squadron Workshop RAMI during the Vietnam conflict.